So I want to say a few things about the next generation of Scratch that we're working on, which is called Scratch 3.0, which will come out later this year. Uh, but I'll give you a sneak peek at Scratch 3.0. So this is the new interface from, from Scratch 3.0. One thing that is special about it is it's designed so it'll work much better on mobile devices. The current version of Scratch is, was designed for laptops and desktops. It does not work well on mobile devices. So this will work on, you'll be able to create projects on tablets, and you could run projects on your phone. So we would see it can, it can reach many more people that way. But we also want to keep adding new features to Scratch. So in fact, an important part of Scratch 3.0 is there's a new button that's called the Extensions button. So you can add new collections of blocks to Scratch. So if you click that button, you'll get a page like this that will show you different types of things that you could add to Scratch. Each of these will be a collection of new programming blocks that extend what you can do with Scratch. So some will be for connecting to the physical world. So like if you want to connect to LEGO Mindstorms, there'll be a collection of blocks for using Scratch to control LEGO Mindstorms or with Microbit, again, connecting to the physical world. But also to do more things just interacting with the computer. So you can see we're working with Google to use some of their speech recognition technology, and you could add those blocks into Scratch. So there'll be some new blocks, both for speech synthesis, for speaking, so I could say, speak hello, and then the program will actually talk. It won't just have a voice balloon, like in the current version of Scratch, but you'll actually have a voice that comes out. And you can set what the voice is, is, sounds like. And there'll also be voice speech recognition. So you can say, when I hear a certain word, then I should say something. So like just as a little example here, in this project, it says here, it says, when I hear what time is it, then the program should say, it's party time. So this is just a simulation of it. It's not really running right now. But it will, should work by say, what time is it? Oops, it didn't work. I'll try it again. What time is it? Party time. So there it's. So it should recognize. So basically, children could make programs that respond to voice commands. And again, I think this is something we're always trying to do, that there are many new devices now that you can talk to. So children will grow up in a world where they can interact with technology through their voice. But it will seem magical to them. And we're often looking, when children have a certain way of interacting with technology, we want to give them the power to create their own projects using those same approaches. So if, if children are interacting with technology through their voice, they should be able to create their own projects to respond to voice commands. So that's what we're adding to Scratch. We're also, we know that many children now, when they play games, like the Nintendo Wii, they can just make gestures with their hands to control things on the screen. So with many games now, you're not just at the keyboard or even with the joystick, but you can make different ways of, you know, different controllers. You act at a distance to communicate with the game. So we want to do the same thing with Scratch. So we're developing a new piece of hardware that's called the Scratch Bit that will communicate with your Scratch project wirelessly. So you can now create a Scratch project, but then also create your own interface that interacts with your Scratch project. So let me show you an example. Hopefully this will work. This is still a prototype. So let's see, I'll, even, I'll put this full screen for a moment. And there's a green flag button on here. So I can start it by hitting the green flag button, I hope. Let's see why it's not working. OK. So you notice, as I'm moving, as I tilt this, the bicycle moves one way or the other. And I can try to capture balloons. So there's a tilt sensor, an accelerometer in here, so I can move this. And notice, like, this is what a child could do. 
since they made a program about a bicycle, a game about a bicycle, you know, handlebars, they actually built bicycle handlebars with Lego. So we want children not just to use their joystick, but to build things in the physical world as well. They also program it so when it hit the button, it plays a horn. But again, children can decide what they build, what their interface should look like, and then what the different features should be, what the button should do. There's a light sensor. What should happen with the light sensor? What happens? I think I get extra points if I catch a taco. I think it's keeping score there. So each time I get a balloon. And you can look at the code. The code says like this code that has things like, it says, what is the tilt angle? So when it's tilted one way, the graphics should go one way. When it's tilted the other way, it goes the other way. When the button is pressed, it plays a sound. Let me show one more example. This one, rather than a game, it's a story. Actually, I'm gonna, let me make it full screen again. So the frog says, please change me back to a wizard by casting a spell. So a child could put the scratch bit on a magic wand. And then when I shake the magic wand, but it says, hey, I'm not an octopus. So I can shake the magic wand again. It says, I'm not a parrot either. So I shake the magic wand again. A watermelon, are you even trying? So one more time. Now it's a wizard. Hey. And again, with the programming, we tried to make it easy so, like there's a command that says, when shaken. So it can detect when you're shaking it and it does something new when you're shaking it. So we try to make very easy ways of getting started, but also you can do more and more sophisticated things over time. Hey. Okay. And I'll just, but actually I'll just, uh, that's probably not, I have another example to show, but I think that's enough. So the, the same bit can be used many different ways. You know, if you throw it in the air, it can detect when you're throwing, or you could put it on your body and when you start jumping, it can tell when you're jumping. So you can make a game that every time I jump, the character jumps. Uh, or as I'm moving, the character moves. So you can just attach it to your own body. So we see many ways. But I think our ultimate goal is to have kids growing up seeing themselves as creators. That where they create things on the computer with, with programming or create things in the physical world, making their own Lego constructions. We want kids to grow up feeling that they can be creators.